have a solution or you have answer to a particular question most of them will be objective so you can just simply put your answer in the comment section which i'll be able to see okay so let us uh, start for today so uh, here is uh, the first question i have selected for today it's uh, you know not so difficult but not so easy as well so try to solve it and then we will discuss the solution uh, within ourselves i think the question is visible to all of you it is on your screen So, uh, also carry pen and paper. We will be discussing the concepts behind questions as well. So, the question is from uh, your exam, uh, uh, CSIR NET, June 2016, 4.75 marks. And uh, uh, it is about a set and its power set. So, the moment you are done, you can answer in the comment section. Otherwise, I will start in a minute. B and D. Okay, one answer I have uh, is B and D. Anyone would else would like to answer otherwise? B and D, B, C and D. Okay, another differing answer is B, C and D. Okay, it's it's a multi-correct question. Yes. Correct. All right. Uh, now let me discuss the solution. Then shall we? Uh, so we have. A as a set, fine. P A be the power set of A, that is usual symbol, and it is given the definition of power set if you do not understand or you understand it other, otherwise. Uh, then, what can you say about power set of A, right? So, uh, we do know uh, that uh, the cardinality of A, the number of element in set A, uh, if is it is uh, some, you know, whether finite or infinite, whatever it is, if we want to find uh, the power set of A, and its cardinality that will be simply 2 to the power cardinality of a okay there is a rich uh, you know uh, proof behind it uh, we can we really uh, you know can't go through that proof right now but there is a proof that every subset corresponds to a characteristic function okay so how uh, the proof works is that if you have you know uh, some b contained in a then you have a function f uh, from uh, you know a to 0 1 which is a characteristic function right so, for every subset, you can have a characteristic function, and such that the number of uh, uh, number of such uh, you know subset is equal to the number of such functions, and you have two to the power cardinality of a such function from a to zero one. So, thus the cardinality is equal. Okay, but anyway, uh, so the first one is saying that even if your a is empty, then the power set of a will have always at least one element, right, which is empty itself. So, the option a is totally incorrect it is it is like the most incorrect option here now let's uh, talk about other options that p a is finite uh, for some a which is obviously true if i take uh, you know you can just take a to be singleton and uh, that will do for you right so p a is finite for some a that is also true now uh, option c and d c says that p a is countable set for some a and option d says that p a is uncountable for some a right if we take A to be uncountable, then there is no problem at all. If I take the set A itself to be uncountable, then power set of A obviously uncountable. Even though if you take A to be countable, like you take set of natural number, right? Uh, if you take A to be set of natural number, then your power set of A uh, that has cardinality, you know, 2 to the power cardinality of n, which, uh, which is simply you have uh, 2 to the power LF node, which is continuum. Right, which is uncountable set. You know? A set which has a cardinality at least continuum is uncountable. You know? uh, the smallest uncountable set has cardinality continuum though. So, uh, we have that P A is uncountable for some A that is obviously true. Now, there is the problem with option, this option, you know, uh, this option C, there is a problem. Now, what is the problem? 
that uh, if you have been through books, uh, there is a book uh, for real analysis by Walter Rudin, you know, the principle of uh, you know introduction to mathematical analysis or something. It's a very small book if you have been through. It's very small book and uh, very compact though and very good book. Uh, the Cantor gives the definition. Uh, sorry, the uh, this uh, Walter Rudin gives the definition of countable set as uh, he doesn't consider finite set as a countable set. He's like finite is always, you know, it's just finite set. Why would we call it a countable set? It's just a finite set. Hmm? Countable means for Cantor, uh, sorry, uh, for uh, this Walter Rudin, countable means, countable means countably infinite for us. Countably infinite. Okay. So, in that book from the Walter Rudin, the countable word and countably infinite are same. That means, he consider a set to be countable. That means, the set has cardinality elif naught. That is it. Hmm? So, for Cantor and uh, I mean the Cantor, the actual definition is that if a set is, we, we say, what do we mean when we say countable? First one is that it is finite or any of these or it is countably infinite or we can just say that it is equivalent to or similar to n. In any of these scenarios, we say that our set is countable, right? But uh, in that book, it is different. So, according to that, you cannot select option C, right? Why you cannot select option C according to that? Because in, in this scenario, if you are if you're countably infinite set, that means if you want to look for the cardinality of that, that means that if a set is countable, then cardinality of A will be simply elif naught. And this will simply imply that the your power set of A will have cardinality, you know, continuum. So, it can never be countably infinite. In general, what I am trying to say is that you can make this as a result or as a note point in your uh, notebook that uh, for any A, it does not matter whatever A you choose, for any set A, power set of A is never countably infinite. It is never countably infinite. And why so? Because we have two scenarios. First, A is finite. And second, that A is infinite. Right? These are the only case we can consider for any set. Either it is finite or it is infinite. In this case, P A is finite. And in this case, what actually happens is, if your set itself is infinite, then uh, the cardinality of the set is at least elif naught. If cardinality of a set is less than elif naught, then it is finite. And this implies that the cardinality of P A, the power set of A, will be greater equal to 2 to the power elif naught, which is greater equal to continuum. And hence, in this case, P A is uncountable. That means, either P A is finite set or P A is uncountable set. So, this statement for any set, P A can never be countably infinite and that is what used behind the explanation. In the first time when they gave the answer, when the CSIR, uh, you know, made the answer key, they gave the answer to be B and D only. Okay, but then people gave the references of other books, which consider that finite set is also a countable set, isn't it? So, then C is also true that if you just write count in place of countable and you just take A to be finite, then it is finite. P A is also finite. That works. So, in that case, your correct answer would be B, C and D. So, the actual correct answer is B, C and D. But again, you can argue with the book that you can give the reference of that book and you can say that I have been through this book and obviously, the Walter Rudin is very reputed book. So, you will get mark for B and D and B, C and D both. Okay. So, yeah, I hope you understood this. If any of you have any question or query about this, you can ask. Anyone? So, uh, a good student always, yeah, good.
okay so a good student always makes note of something which he learns new every day right so if you if this theorem is new for you for the first time you will make it a small note in your notebook and keep it in your book of results okay so that's a sign of you know a learning person so try to be one okay uh, now the next one i'll be uh, i'll be talking about a very recent question in netjrf exam uh, i think it's from last to last exam so let's talk about that uh, this next question which i'm talking about is actually mixed up with uh, sequences so again interesting one so uh, the, i think let me just paste it here okay okay this pen is not going away just give me a second fine stay here okay uh, so this is also from uh, you know very recent exam of netjarev itself where you have given two sets x and y and then they talk about uh, their countability and all okay so uh, i think question is clear to you all of you is it visible i mean i hope no one is facing problem in that okay yeah okay so uh, try to solve this uh, before that i can point out two things uh, here that uh, th today we are discussing uh, a question from the countability and point set topology i can talk about their marking quota that you might find little bit interesting for you so uh, if we if we take uh, it as a subject then uh, these two are considered in uh, as a part of uh, the subject real analysis okay so uh, in real analysis real analysis itself is a very big subject considering for the whole syllabus uh, for net jrf so yeah in real analysis uh, we have these two chapters which we are discussing today one is countability and other one is point set topology in r i'll take question from here as well okay so if we uh, look in the exam from uh, this particular uh, uh, you know these two segment then you find uh, one question in your every exam from here i mean uh, mostly in gate 2 and in net it is surety almost like 99 percent chance is there that there will be one question from the uh, this particular topic countability okay sometimes they connect it to the different topics like the question i gave you above this one is connected to sequences and limit of a sequence they have even connected it to point set topology as well in that case you can count that question in both of them like how many dense subset you can find in r that was previous to previous year question in net jrf like you can you can find countable you can find uncountable and something like that so you know there is absolutely one question fixed from this particular topic in very rare scenario you can expect two but one is for sure uh, the other one is point set topology uh, it's actually the topology in r only we don't consider you know go to usual metric spaces and then define definition in metric spaces open ball and all no we just fix it to r and for us the metric is standard metric distance between x and y is mod x minus y and we consider every scenario in this particular topology that means open intervals open set close interval close sets you know limit points and all the results dense subsets in r and all of that from here alone you can you can expect two questions okay but the interesting thing about this is that uh, many times they ask you question from the use you know general topology like from general metric space they have asked you a question or from general topology they have you asked you a question but by just using this topology in r you can discard three option in part b and select one and in part c sometimes you can discard one or two option which is actually helpful you know at least it is helpful that you can discard two it is really helpful so in that case you can solve you know two up to two question from the topology as as well so that is actually a good part from this this segment hmm? anyway so that is marking quota for this topic which we are discuss, discussing to, today around you can say that three questions you can expect in your exam at least there may be more uh, now uh, if we talk about uh, uh, this you know the concept behind these is the uh, the you know this chapter countability you can consider it as a small chapter you know that's how you study a big subject you break it into small small parts and then you study one part work on one part and then you move to the next part 
now what do you need to be care careful about is that uh, you consider your uh, you know each part uh, to be to be you know uh, in a way that two part doesn't cross their path like if you are going through countability you must not get into sequences or like you know get further you need to set them in a uh, set them in a manner that it comes one after another like you are going through limit then you go through continuity then you go through uniform continuity then you go through differentiability right and then you go through uniform convergence so there is a pattern of how you can complete syllabus of a particular subject so uh, you need to follow that as well when you are covering the theory part anyways uh, let us get back to the study part if any of you have any general question you can also ask because i want this session to be interactive okay uh, so here it's your question your uh, your question is on your screen you try to solve this and then i'll discuss the solution of this particular question with all of you try this out Uh, the question mixes two topic sequences and uh, uh, countability okay so if i can make it little bigger yeah better D. Okay. One answer I have is D. Anyone else wants to try otherwise? Hmm? Option C. Okay. Another answer is C. You can you can answer in the comment section. Okay, that will also work. I can I can just read the comment. Okay, so uh, people agree. Some people agree with C, and some people agree with D. Hmm? Okay, so uh, let me solve it now. Hmm? So, uh, it you you have you have given two sets uh, and both of them contains uh, sequences in uh, uh, you know zero one okay so let me talk about each of them one by one okay. right. this pen is really irritating us just give me a second i take it to another book Okay. So, uh, in set number one, we have uh, all those sequences uh, whose uh, limit supremum is one, and uh, all those sequences whose limit does not exist. Okay. So now, uh, our sequence actually belongs to zero one. So x n is in zero one. Hmm. Now let us consider a set another set call it a so i take a set a in which i consider all the function all the sequences you know all the sequences uh, xn such that xn is a sequence in 0 1 okay now can anyone tell me that whether this a is countable or not this set which i have defined whether it is countable or not is yes it's uncountable yes yes no the zero one actually defines just two elements zero and one okay it's not not a uh, interval it's set with two element 
okay this set is uncountable and why is that so because you can actually prove that a sequence is nothing not actually prove it's a definition of a sequence that a sequence is nothing but it is a function function whose domain is set of natural number and codomain is whatever in the terms of your you know the values uh, uh, that uh, taken by your terms of the sequences like in in this one we have 0 and 1 so how many sequences you can have exactly as many as functions you can have from n to 0 1 and this you know the set of all you know function from this set to this set the cardinality of simply this set is that you take uh, 0 1 cardinality of this set and whole power cardinality of domain i think you all know that result that if you take a set of all function from a to b then uh, collection of all such functions uh, will have cardinality cardinality of codomain to the whole power cardinality of domain okay if, and simply if you take from a to b then cardinality of b to the power cardinality of a right and thus you get 2 to the power aleph node which is continuous right so this set actually if you take all the sequences that is uncountable now they are putting restrictions over this set only right now what restrictions they are putting is uh, the very first set x they are putting restriction is that whatever sequence you have it should have a limit supremum as as one right so that means you take all those sequences x n such that you have limit supremum of x n to be one okay uh, so your sequence can have uh, two limit point at most because the sequence is in 0 and 1 so either it can have only one as a limit point or it can have 0 and 1 both as a limit point done that is fine now uh, you want to have all those sequences in which a limit supremum is 1 okay that means 1 should be a limit point that is it 1 should be a limit point that means you you want to you only want to take all, take all those sequences x n such that 1 is a limit point of x n that is it you are not putting a restriction over the sequence that after some term it should be 0 or after some term it should be 1 no that you are only taking all those sequences x n such that x n equal to 1 for infinite n if a sequence attains one value infinitely times then that becomes a limit point of the sequence right okay uh, now we can look at as uh, uh, another point of view if i take x complement that means x n such that x n equal to 1 for finite n and x n belongs to 0 and 1 okay if you look at this complement it is just sequence you know set of all sequences which are eventually 0 right because your sequence can take either 0 or 1 and you can take 1 only finitely many times right so that means the rest of the term is 0 this is a set of all sequences which are in 0 1 and eventually 0 after some terms it becomes 0 is countable obviously that I think you know right so the complement is uh, you know countable and uh, you take x union x complement then you get this set a this set a all the sequences obviously this now we know that this is countable we also know that this is uncountable now what can you say about this set x hmm? anyone x must be uncountable because it is a complement of a countable set in an uncountable set thus x must be uncountable right and we can easily select that your x is actually uncountable option a is gone because it says x and y are uh, uncountable x is countable that is also gone x is uncountable x is uncountable so we are left with two options now and uh, now let us look at uh, y okay y says that all those sequences whose limit does not exist at all like limit does not exist okay now look at it very carefully 
that if you take all those sequences whose limit supremum is 1 okay uh, and you are taking all those sequences whose limit does not exist at all hmm? so uh, you know so i mean can you say which is subset of which one like is there any relation between x and y can you can you find any relation between x and y so what actually we are doing is that uh, either the sequence can have limit supremum 1 if a sequence has limit supremum 1 then there are two cases one is that the sequence is convergent in that case it will converge to 1 only because 1 is one of the limit point and the other scenario is that the sequence is not convergent in that case limit doesn't exist limit okay limit point is there but limit does not exist that means your y is actually proper subset of x proper okay now uh, you can actually take all those uh, sequences in this case in y what you can take is you can you know y can be written like this you you have y to be all those sequences x n belongs to uh, you know uh, 0 1 such that x n equal to 0 for infinite n and x n equal to 1 for infinite n. That is the only possibility for the sequence to not have limit. Right? Now, what can you say? You know, you can think of it is as a layman language that you want to make a sequence in 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, you know, you can have random sequence. But for each place is up till, you know, it does not matter that at how many stop steps you have reached, yet you do not know whether it will be 0 or 1, the term. Okay, that is what actually not countable set is, that you cannot tell what will be the pattern of the elements. What is countability? You say a set is countable if, if you can actually recognize, you can put them into a process that this element, after this, this element, after that, this element, right. So, that you know that what is the successor and what is the predecessor of every element. If you can put a set into such process, then you say the set is countable, whether it is finite or infinite. But here you cannot, you cannot actually recognize that at whatever process you put, what will be the, you know, some random entry of a random sequence. You cannot put it into the process because 1 is infinite time and 0 is also infinite time. So, the terms are random, sequence is not fixing itself, right. Whereas, if I fix this same sequence that x n equal to 0 for finite n, now if I take any sequence from this, if I take any, if it is 0 for only finite n, that means for any x n belongs to y, there exists some k such that x n equal to 0 x n equal to 1 for all n greater or equal to k because after some terms it will become constant 1 because 1 0 is for finite only not infinite ok. So, uh, that is how the you know the word countability is there you just need to you know make it sensible again you can write it as a complement of the countable set and proceed with such method as well ok. You, you name you know you can write a as y union y complement and your y complement is actually you will have either x is uh, 0 for finite n uh, or y is 0 for finite n. In that case, that set will be countable. Okay. So, y complement is countable, you can easily prove that. So, the correct answer will be that uh, your y must be, uh, you know, y is also uncountable. Both of them are uncountable. So, y is also uncountable, this is also gone and correct answer is D. I hope you understood the concept behind the question. Hmm? Anyone, any question about this? No, okay, okay, all right. Uh, let us move to the next question. I will take a little bit easier type of question. So, you, uh, this question is from NetJRF only, a little bit old. I try this out. Okay. So, you have given some subsets of R2 and uh, then you need to talk about their uh, countability. Okay. So, Think about it and try to answer in the comment section.
A, B, D and A, B, C mixed answer I am getting. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let, let, let us discuss it together. So, uh, how do you show a set is, set is uncountable? You know, in generally the method is simple that uh, you somehow show that in the given set, there is an uncountable subset that will suffice is that if you can show that there is an uncountable sub subset of the given set then your set must be uncountable. So, that is what we are going to do we are going to show that each of uh, whenever you know uh, whenever there is a we, we you know we will show that any set which is uncountable here there is an uncountable subset contained in it. So, let us try to fix that. First of all, if I look at option D, if I am in the exam and I can easily verify that it is actually Q cross Q, right. And we also know that Q is countable and hence finite Cartesian product of a countable set is countable. Why only two if they have given us some more like some like 2002, still it would be countable because A and B are rational. So, Q cross Q only that set must be countable. So, option D is countable for sure. So, we will eliminate this one from our list. Let us look at A, B and C. Now, uh, if I look at A, I want to show that uh, it is uncountable, then I need to show that there is an uncountable subset. So, let us call it A 1. Now, I will make an uncountable subset in this one. So, I need uh, A and B such that A is less equal to B. No. What I can do is I can fix one of them. Let me fix one of them. Uh, let us fix uh, A. Let us fix A to be 1. So, what I have is if I fix A to be 1, uh, then I get uh, 1 comma B. Okay. Now, your B must be greater or equal to 1. That means, B belongs to B should be greater or equal to A and it should be from R. Right? So, B belongs to 1 to infinite. But this is my set, right? Now let let us call it S S one or something. Okay, let's call it S one. Right? You can easily see that this S one is actually subset of A one. Obviously, because this satisfies the condition. Now you can show that you take any element from here, like one comma b type of element and map it to b. This is a function from your set s1 to the set interval 1 comma infinite. You can easily show that this map is actually 1 1 on 2 hence bijection. Thus, cardinality of s1 is same as cardinality of 1 to the power infinite sorry 1 to infinite and its con continuum and the set is uncounted. Right. Same we need to do for the second and third. We have showed that there is an uncountable subset in option, you know, in this set A1, which is this one. You can you can fix B and you can find you know, that's totally subjective. Let's look for the second one. Now in the second one, what they are saying is that A plus B must be rational. Okay. So how do we do that? Uh, what I do is I know that you, if you have two real numbers, even though they are not rational, their sum can be rational. It's possible. So, I will use that fact and I will choose these kind of irrational number like you see if I take 1 minus pi and I add pi into it, I will get simply 1 right? that is rational. That means, this element 1 minus pi and pi if I write it as a coordinate 1 minus pi and pi that is actually an element in my set let us call it A2 and I will use this fact. Okay. So, what we do is let us fix these kind of number 1 minus alpha and alpha alpha belongs to q complement. Now, if you add a and b, then you get simply 1 which is rational and hence this whatever this set call it s2, this is contained in our set a, a2. Now, can you say s2 is countable or uncountable? How many elements are there in s2? Anyone? as many as irrational you have. Alpha is from irrational. No? So, you can show that S2 is similar to Q complement. Number of 
uncountable and thus b is also uncountable right similarly in c you take 1 by a and a right a is non zero then their product will be simply 1 a belongs to r minus 0 so you can show that this set which is uncountable similar to r minus 0 is a subset of this set and hence c is also uncountable okay so correct answers are a b and c let me take the next question you can ask if you if there is any query or question you are having <laughs> this question is kind of a little bit popular i hope uh, you have faced this problem in your life once let us talk about uh, each and every option in this question try to solve this this is from june 2019 3 marks b oh yeah sure anamic i can okay b everyone agrees with b okay now uh, if you look at the question it is very easy to find the answer in the exam and solve in the exam because it's you know if you look at all four options and not solve all of them and solve the easiest one which you can solve then it is very easy the concept is same as we discussed in the last last uh, you know uh, question that we look for an uncountable subset right and you can easily you know a blind person from the mathematical background can see it that if you take all those you know if you just fix n to be one just one you know so if i take n equal to 1 not not 1 2 we'll have to fix 2 2 then you can just do this that cos x whole square plus sin x whole square this thing is 1 for all x belongs to r that means if i take n equal to 1 then i am not sure but if i take n equal to 2 then this set is actually set of all real number because for every x belongs to r this equation satisfies so the set is whole real number and hence uncountable and i'm done with my problem in the exam and i secured three marks now because we are in, not in the exam we have to solve a c and d too what will be you know how can we solve that a c and d so uh let us look for uh, uh one by one for all these uh you know, options uh anyone would like to give any hint for option a like why option a is uh, you know not true why option a is countable what is the reason log x is 1 1 function exactly yes good satya so the very reason is that the log x is actually 1 1 function so since log x is 1 1 function we can say that what what i want in the range you know i am taking all a function f what i'm actually doing is i'm taking a function f from uh, uh, you know r r positive to r let's say okay and i want f of uh, and f of x is equal to log x right and what i want is i just want the inverse image of q positive from here right because i want that all those x for which log x equal to you know log x belongs to q positive means inverse image of q positive because p by q for all p q belongs to n is actually q positive hmm? set of all positive rational numbers hmm? and since the map is 1 1 so the inverse image of q positive under this function will also be similar to q positive so, no? so whatever inverse image is that means f inverse q whatever it is it will be it will be similar to you know q itself Q, q positive is similar to q positive because of the map being 1 1 so there is for every element in the codomain there is exactly one inverse image and hence 
they will be similar now, under a one one map you know you can easily imply some things like if you have a one one map from you know any domain to codomain so what can you imply when you have a one one map let's talk about that let's say that you have f from a to b one 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 map then the very first and immediate result is that you know for every element in a you have exactly one element in b exactly one this implies that a and f a have the same cardinality hmm? second is that uh, you know you can easily claim that uh, uh, you know uh, that f inverse a has the same cardinality as of a because the map is one one you know so these results you can apply and the final list is that you see that cardinality of a is same as f a and where you can you can easily see that f a is actually contained in b that means the cardinality of b will be at least cardinality of f a that means cardinality of a is less equal to cardinality of b these results about one one map if you have a one one map from one set to another set you can easily imply these results how about having an own to map what if there exists an own to map there exists f from a to b which is own to and what can you say about this one so in this scenario uh, the very first result you can map make is that uh, you know for every element in b for every element in b you have at least one element in a that is definition of one to know that every element from here has an inverse image now one inverse image more than one inverse image that we don't know for every element in b we have an inverse image in a right so we can easily make very first result is that the cardinality of a is always greater equal to cardinality of b that is all that is all countability is about this result this third one and this one that's it if you have one one map then this if you have an on to map then this done the whole chapter is done partially okay so cardinality of a is a greater equal to cardinality of b that you can apply when you have an on to map yeah, right and uh, you know uh, all these results you can't have here anyways let's let's get back to our question these results you can make uh, you know make a note now uh, let me look at this question again so since the logarithmic function is 1 1 i can easily uh, you know put that uh, the number of all such x such that you get p by q is same as that of how many p by q have you have and how many p by q you have for p q belongs to natural as many as positive rational numbers you have that means this set has cardinality exactly as many as there are positive rationals and hence it is a countable set similarly how about option c it's just inverse you apply inverse e to the power x equal to p upon q now exponent function is also one one so how many x you can have as many as p upon q you can have and how many p upon q you can have as many as positive rationals you have this is also countable now the problem is in option d how do we show that d is also countable anyone why d is countable hmm satyam have a problem that x square plus y square equal to 1 upon n square x y belongs to q okay we, we will take that problem too okay i think i can find that problem it's also some p by q let me try to figure it out if it is there if i have it In the meantime, if any of you can answer my query, that what about option four? How do we show it is uncountable? I mean, sorry, countable. Anyone? anyone why it is countable nobody knows hmm? let's let's look at it in this one so we will use the same concept 
that the map is one one. But cos x is not one one. Cos x is not one one. But it is in some subset of R, and we will use that. Okay. What do I need? I need cos x to be. Okay, you go away. I need cos x to be. p upon q right and i want all all those real number what i do is i will fix them i will fix x i don't want for all x from you know uh, r i will fix x in a manner such that my cos x is 1 1 you all know the graph of cos x somewhat looks like this this So, we will restrict it in one particular domain. Uh, so, let, let us fix from here only. I will take this block 0 to pi at 0 1 at pi minus 1. Now, it is repeating values, right? Whatever value here, it is same giving you same value. So, it is repeating not 1 1 anymore, right? So, I can restrict the function into this whole domain. In this one, your cos x is 1 1 function. Yes, at the same time, cos x is periodic as well. So, as many as point you get here, exactly number of point you will get in the second block as well, and exactly number of point in the third block. So, how many point you get here will be the exactly number where cos x equal to p by q you will get here, and you will get into the next block. Right? And in this one, your function is 1 1. Right. So, cos x equal to p by q will have at most countably many solution because the function is 1 1 for any x you are getting p by q that will be only you know p by q can be attained one, once only because of the being function 1 1. Okay. So, here you have countable, here you have also countable and here you have also countable. So, you have broken all real line into small small parts and in each part you have countably many elements. So, your set can be written as countable union of countable sets and hence the set is what? Countable. Okay. So, what we did is we restricted the function in a manner such that in a particular domain it is 1 1 and then we are taking union of you know because of the periodicity of the cos x function. Done? And hence this is oh, this is actually a countable set. So, the actual correct answer is C only, but we are you know uh, interested in knowing uh, what are the reason behind behind other options now i am having a question in the doubt section let let us discuss about that, that as well so the question is that uh, is taking a set s and collecting all those real number x and y uh, let me check the question again if any of you have any query you can also yes exactly uh, you can also put in the comment section x y such that x square plus y square is 1 x square plus y square equal to 1 upon n square right and you have that x and y both belongs to q and n belongs to n x y belongs to q and n belongs to n okay now can anyone tell me that uh, whether this set is countable or not, anyone, anyone want to answer this? You have a collection of all those ordered pair in R2, this is subset of R2, such that their square is equal to 1 by n square for some n, whatever n you choose, there is some, you know, I mean, I think it is for all n keys, it is countable. How can we say that? You know, in, in mathematics, we are always interested in knowing the reason, what is the reason, why? You know, as many time as you can ask yourself the question why, when you are not in the exam, it will be, you know, very helpful for you. When you go to the exam, you do not need to ask, right. But when you are doing problems at home, you need to think of every possible, you know, explanation, every possible question you can get over a question, you know, edit the question, think what if this, what if that, then what will happen? that will help you in the in the exam because the questions are always in the neighborhood of the question in you know which have been asked in the past anyways so how do i prove it 
how do i prove that this set is countable or if it is not countable then how do i discard it okay so now uh, very first thing is i can see that uh, uh, in this one he has taken that x is and y both are rational right x and y both are rational i think there is something wrong with the question is the question is fine because in that way it is very easy to see that it is a hmm? anyone would also uh, is the question is fine or is there any issue with the question i think there is a issue with the question if not then we will edit the question to make it interesting anyone sir x belongs to q or y belongs to q yeah either one of them belongs to q that is guarantee we don't know about the other right that will make the question interesting yes so we have that either x belongs to q or y belongs to q so we have that this is not the condition it is x belongs to q or y belongs to q because otherwise it is just simply a subset of q cross q if you take all q cross q then it still it is fine now it makes it interesting now we need to see that whether it remains countable or not how do we do that so uh, now what we do is we assume both cases let x belongs to q okay so let x belongs to q let x belongs to q now do you see the symmetry that x square plus y square is 1 by n square it doesn't matter if i interchange x and y it's same so there is a symmetry so this is actually without losing the generalization w l o g without losing the generalization i can take y belongs to q as well and then the same process will follow so let x belongs to q this implies x square plus y square is equal to 1 upon n square now x is in q this implies that x must be some p square upon q square you know p upon q p square p upon q this implies i have that y square equal to 1 upon n square minus p upon q whole square what can you say anything about the y can you say anything about the y you have taken x from the q and you have gotten y uh, you you are getting y to be like this the square root of this it's simply that at most two solution because it is a square equation at most two solution at most two you can get right so and same for the y so if you fix any x belongs to q then you have at most two choice for y y1 and y2 and how many x you can have as many as rationals you can have and how many y you can have at most q cross q now can you say anything about the countability because fixing the x is also putting the restriction over y as well if you fix x to be rational then y also y doesn't become rational but y square become rational that means y is an algebraic number that fixes that even the algebraic number is also countable so you can you can why? yes why may be irrational but it cannot be transcendental it will be algebraic because the square is rational getting me any irrational number whose square is rational is actually algebraic number so this s is actually contained in q cross a set of all algebraic number and set of all rational number or you can write it vice versa a cross q you know you you, you know it, it it can be both of them at most that's it because you can choose the opposite too right so at most a cross a i don't think it can exceed that you cannot have any transcendental number here all algebraic x and y both must be algebraic and why so because they are they are solution of a equation with rational coefficients that is definition of algebraic number no so they are all algebraic number and hence the set must be countable
I hope it is clear. It's not rational, but you know the square must be rational. So I mean, if you can have this kind of question as well, you take uh, let's say that S all those you know x belongs to R such that x to the power n belongs to Q for some x for some n belongs to n. Then what can you say about this set? Hmm? New question, garam garam, taja taja question, fresh. What can you say about this one? Hmm? All those real number whose some power is rational. Anyone? Countable? These are algebraics, na? You know, if you take p x equal to x to the power n minus p upon q right then if you take this kind of polynomial then your element become root of this your element this x become root of this equation this is a equation with rational coefficient and hence an algebraic number so this s is contained in set of all algebraic numbers and r can be broken into two part set of all algebraic number and set of all transcendental number. This is uncountable and this is countable. And here, if you take any x and it's any power, it's never algebraic. It's never rational. It's never integer like pi exponent pi to the power e, e to the power pi, char pi, chai pi, jobi. <laughs> they are never algebraic. Okay. They will remain transcendental. Uh, sum of two transcendental number need no transcendental. Sum of two algebraic number is always algebraic. And hence, uh, you know, uh, set of all algebraic number, ye wala field ban jata, field. This is a field, subfield of R. This is not even closed with addition because 1 minus pi plus pi does not belong to 2. This one doesn't form a field, it's not even a group. This is a field. Okay. So that we can talk in algebra. Anyways, so I mean you can partition R into two parts. You know, one is this that R can be written as algebraic and transcendental, and the other one is that R can be written as rational and irrational. Right? And what is the relation between these two partitions? Also, at the same time, you can make sure that their intersection is trivial, right? That is also there. A intersection T is empty and Q intersection Q complement is also empty. That is why I am saying the word partition of a set. You can you can look at them using you know when when diagram that how they are related with each other. Uh, this is how they are related. So you have uh, this is set of all real number, let's say, and uh, you have a uh, uh, set of all um, rational. Let's say this is set of all rational Q. Okay, and uh, this is your set of all irrational inside it. This is irrational. There is nothing common in them, right? Q and Q intersection has nothing in common. Sorry, Q complement. Q complement. Now, I will give you the transcendentals inside it. These are your transcendental. So, uh, all the rational number are algebraic. Some irrational number are also algebraic. So, these are transcendental. Okay. And these are algebraic. So, every rational is algebraic, every irrational is transcendental, no, every transcendental is irrational, yes, there is nothing common in algebraic and irrational, no, there is common, there is this part is common, no, those elements whose some power is rational are actually algebraic number, it's like square root 2, square is 2, rational, it's an algebraic, this irrational number is algebraic, okay. so that's like. 
एनीवेज दैट सम जनरल नॉलेज काउंटेबिलिटी ऑफ क्यू इंटरसेक्शन स्क्वायर रूट टू स्क्वायर रूट थ्री वाई वाई डू यू हैव प्रॉब्लम इन दैट यू नो इफ यू हैव अ काउंटेबल सेट इट्स एवरी सबसेट इज काउंटेबल यू यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चन वी आर टेकिंग जनरल क्वारीज नाउ सो द क्वेश्चन इज दैट यू आर यू टेक एनी ए इज काउंटेबल इफ ए इज काउंटेबल and b is contained in a then define f from b to a f of x equal to x identity map it is one one map may not be onto this implies f is one one this implies cardinality of b is less equal to that of cardinality of a we had the result just before a moment this implies if a is countable b must be countable and what is the corollary we are having the corollary is that subset of a countable set hai na that cardinality of a subset can never exceed that of set right that we can write you know for any b contained in a cardinality of b is less equal to cardinality of a that is what this result says that if you take b contained in a then you can find a one one map and hence you can apply the cardinality result this is about infinite we need theoretical proof we can not just say in air right so we have a proof for that and now you are you are taking that uh, your set is About minus square root two to square root two, and you are taking intersection with Q. Isn't this contained in Q? Hmm? Right. You you can take anything like for any for any a contained in R. A intersection Q is countable. obviously no for any a contained in r a intersection q is countable it is always all right anyone else would like to ask something anyone else otherwise i'll put another question if they ask in r it it whatever wherever they ask because now it is a subset of q if you take intersection with q then it is going to be always countable hmm? whatever set you take in this world if the intersection is with q it is countable because it is a subset of q now whatever the things come it is a subset of q and must be countable okay try this out ah uh, by the way i have an update for you if any of you don't know so far uh, you can you can you know get more practice questions with the answers uh, on on the website which i am developing nowadays uh, you can just simply google uh, on the google you can write the name uh, r squared mathematics i think some of you may know and some of you may not know you can you can simply uh, you know uh, search r squared mathematics on google you will find a website on the top uh in that uh, you can find many practice questions uh, with solution on for net grf and uh, some books and i'm trying to develop it very good so you can get some help from that i i am sure that it will be helpful for all the people who are preparing for net grf so you can just simply go there and check it out uh so anyone would like to solve this one any answer Yeah, you're welcome, Sapta. Okay. 
the question is from uh, point set topology topology in r so let s be an infinite subset of r such that s intersection q is empty all true hmm? one answer i'm having is that all options are true anyone else like to answer okay, okay good enough all all b one answer i'm having is b all and b anyone else d is also there okay d a and c are left anyone would like to put a or c okay at least a and c are not there okay let's try this now what do we have here we have that uh, s is an infinite subset of r infinite subset of r such that s intersection q is empty fine all right that means this s is actually contained in q complement now what s must have a limit point why should it have a limit point at all every subset of a rational number has a limit point no hmm? every infinite subset of rational has a limit point if it is bounded it must every bounded subset in r which is infinite has a limit point so we will take an infinite subset of r which is subset of irrational as well but not bounded let's take this for option a let's take this s equal to square root p p is prime this is contained in q complement because every square root p you know p square root of p is never you know a rational it's always an irrational number prime is never a perfect square not even a square so these all are irrationals this is an infinite set hmm? and intersection with q is empty how many limit point are there no limit point at all why no limit point because numbers are like this square root 2 is here square root 3 is here square root 5 is here see the gap between them how can you get a limit point if there is this much gap between numbers so s must have a limit point. no we will not going to read further s must have a limit point no okay s cannot be closed in our our set is closed because it has no limit point and s derived which is empty contained in s that is definition of closed set a subset of r is closed if and only if it contains all its limit point and now there is no limit point so the set must be closed our set is closed a b c all gone only d left how about d now r minus s must have a limit point which belongs to s that we have to see okay so let's talk about this now so we have that what do we have we have that s intersection with q is actually empty right this implies q is contained in r minus s right because if you take s from set of all real number you are not taking any rational number at all so q is contained this implies q derived is contained in r minus s derived now what is q derived set of limit point of all rational number
what I can imply from here that every real number is a limit point of r minus s. If a set contains no rational number, then its complement is dense in r because that complement will contain rationals. So, r minus s is dense in r must have a limit point which belongs to s yes which belongs to q yes which belongs to q complement yes because it is all r. So, correct answer is option D. Anyone any issue with that? <laughs> all gone. A, B, C, D. All gone. Only D left. Why so? Because it is dense. You are taking a subset of you know all those numbers which are which none of them is rational. And if you take it out from the real, then your rational is there. And that alone is dense in R. All right. I hope it is clear for everyone. Anyone has any issue with that? Okay. Let me get to some uh, some more problem from from the topic uh, points at topology only. One or two, then we'll stop. Uh, you you can any of you can ask your questions if you have any. Any of you, I'm I'm open to your problems. Like even if you have a general query. I mean, when I say general, I mean the problem related to NetJRF exam and mathematics exam. Okay, don't start with your personal problems. Okay, try this out. Last question for today. It's easy, I think everyone of you can try this. Hmm. Any answer, anyone? C, the complement of it. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, in the competitive exams, you have two ways to solve a problem. One is to solve the problem and other one is to discard other option and not solve the problem and get the answer. So, in exam it is allowed both of them. So, to get the answer you can apply other one as well, right. So, uh, like if you look at this, this one is saying that the interval 0 1, right, the interval 0 1. So, you can easily say that the, the 1 and 0 does not satisfy this equation. 1 is square is not greater than 1. So, 1 cannot be in this set, this is gone, right. The complement of the interval 0 1, the complement of the interval 0 1 also contains 1 and 1 is not in our set, this is also gone, this is trivial, saying empty, no x satisfy this equation, that problem is solved. By just using x equal to 1 is not in our set, I can solve the problem, it is 30 second problem. Now, we can solve. Now, we can solve easily that we can get assurance about C. I have that x square must be greater than x, right. So, I have x times x minus 1 should be greater than 0. Now, we can use that line rule like this. So, you, you have two zeros, one at 0 and other one is at 1 and then you make the graph of it, right. So, 
you know you want this to be positive so it is positive here then become negative then it become positive so this i think you know wavy curve method to find sign of a function of a polynomial right so here it is positive here it is positive here it is negative so this this part and this part is your answer that means complement of closed interval 0 1 rest of that it is positive so correct answer is c hmm? yeah from graph also you can have all right uh so i think we should stop here for today enough time i think for the session if any of you have the question uh there is one question from uh you know from the topology let n with the usual metric d which of the following is true hmm? uh usual metric you are taking on d any finite subset of n is open bowl open in n yes open in n yes the set uh, 1 to n is an open ball in nd for all n the set n n plus 1 is an open ball in nd for all n any infinite subset is in any subset you know if you take the usual restriction over n you know you need to look at it if if you have uh, you know you are taking uh, x to be r okay and uh, now you are taking your set let's call it y y to be n and now you are defining subspace topology on y actually that's what you are doing right this is of discrete point if you take a subset of r which is like this which has no limit points then it actually defines somewhat discrete okay you take any subset any subset like you have taken any a contained in n then your a must be like let's say it is finite so it is a1 a2 so on a n like this only so let's say that you take a1 minus 1 let's say it is in increasing order a1 minus 1 and a n minus 1 intersection n this is your a you know you can take 1 by 2 this is your set a or not because you are taking all the you know all the numbers you know, assuming that a1 is less than a2 is so on less than a n any finite set can be written like this now if you take any a and a can be written as some u intersection y then a is open in y if and only if u is open Yeah. Uh, yeah. Am I am I audible now? Actually, there was some network issue. <laughs> am I audible now? Anyone? Okay. I think now I am audible. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, there was some uh, network issue. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. I think I am done with the explanation. I hope the person who asked got it. Yeah. Who asked this? Is it clear? Yes. All right. You know, every subset will be open because you can write it as u intersection n where u is open in R. 
so proving that every subset of n is open in n with usual now it, since every is open so its complement will be closed that explains your problem completely yeah discrete one yes sir on, on a finite subset of r or if you take all you know without limit point any set then you will get discrete topology only yeah all right then uh, i'll stop here for today Thank you all of you for your positive feedback. Yes, Suraj is asking about uh, the classes in Google Meeting. Uh, whenever we arrange some classes, we will share that information to our WhatsApp group as well as Telegram. Yeah. Uh, about the future classes, I mean, uh, if there will be any class from my side, then Sir will update you in advance. Uh, you can find some problem solutions online which you might find on some youtube or somewhere sold by me so that can be helpful for you yes. dear participants please share your feedback yeah yeah good evening sikha yeah you are my name is Shikha and I have completed my integrated MSc in Mathematics and Computing from Birla Institute of Technology okay. and I am from Chartier. So your session was, uh, today your session was really amazing and uh, I have seen your various sessions in different platforms also. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, it is always helpful for us and uh, it is easy to understand as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I can hear you. I think we lost the connection. Yeah. Uh, I think now you really do not have so much time. You know, there are, I think, uh, two and a half months mostly. Uh, exactly, I think, not mostly, it's exactly two and a half months. So, uh, uh, for your part, I think you should uh, be more on practice now, solve more and more problems. You can make a rule by choosing the subject like you will do this subject for this many days, these many days. And uh, uh, also you need to plan, like make a plan, list all the subjects which you are going to cover for the upcoming exam and uh, divide uh, the weekly schedule to subjects. Like, okay, this week you will do this subject, this week you will do this subject. And, uh, and uh, uh, fix like every day you will solve 40, 50, 70, 100 problems as many as you can from the particular topics like you have decided today you will do real or you will do for these upcoming seven days you will do real that is totally subjective how you are comfortable with but i think right now you will need to start preparing at war, war mode like you are working like 24 7 other than sleeping you are just preparing for your exam Uh, Rajendra sir, we are uh, hoping for more such sessions from your side. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try to manage more. It was a really a good session. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Siddha Mukherjee. Can you introduce yourself? You're from which place? All right then, uh, one thing I would point out that uh, majorly you will see that uh, people are hunting for, you know, what is the answer to this question. Uh, I would suggest all of the people who are preparing is hunting for what is the concept behind this answer. So that will solve most of your problems, I think, and create many more problems for you. Yeah. Okay. I think we can't hear you, Dharmendra. Are you on mute or something? He's not on mute, I think he has to remove his earphone or something. Maybe something is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, I think you are cle cle uh, I mean, complete with your question, right? I hope so, yeah. Okay, so I mean, uh, if you look for the book, then uh, uh, I think there are Indian authors and then there are foreign authors as well. So if you are at uh, very level one, then uh, you can prefer to uh, SK MAPA. MAPA is fine. It is completely fine book for real analysis. It has a detailed uh, solution to the problem. But at the same time, since it has detailed solution to the problem, it is not that good because there should be some open problems which are left for you. So, uh, in that case, you can refer to Bartley, you know, anal real analysis by Bartley. You can find all these PDFs on internet. These days, they are available. Even in the group, you might find them. So, uh, you can go for uh, Bartley or MAPA. But if you want to go to the little bit next level, I would suggest you Apostle. And uh, if you want to look for more, then go for Walter Rudin. So these are like level, first level, second level, third level, fourth level. So the first one would be MAPA. I would uh, suggest you to start with SK MAPA. And uh, uh, difference between, you know, the metric space is actually, uh, it's a point set topology just when we talk about points and we try to, you know, discuss uh, topology about a, a point, you know, when, when we can talk about points like this point, that point and so on. In general, you have metric spaces and then you have topology, right? So, uh, from the metric space, you can get a topology. Every metric space uh, gives you a topology by, you know, you collect all the open set from that particular metric space and then that actually satisfy that collection of all open set, satisfy the definition of being uh, a topology. So, every metric space, it, uh, you know, you can, you, leads you to a topological space, but whereas converse is not true that every topology is induced by some metric, no. Those metrics, those topologies which are induced by some metric are referred as metrizable uh, topologies and rest are non-metrizable. So that is the next level, uh, you know, you can go to. If you are looking for some basic book on topology uh, of metric spaces, you can refer to Kumarison, book by S. Kumarison. It is really good, very compact book and number of good examples are there very good examples you know the only reason i like that book is that it has very compact and good amount of examples if you want to go for detailed then uh, you can go for uh, monkers monker is like uh, you know exactly the grunt for uh, topology you can refer for monkers so yeah to start with go for uh, this kumarison that will do for net gate jrf all Of, uh, 
yourself and uh, what topic you selected? Uh, yeah, so uh, I am in my uh, third year of the PhD I'm, and uh, I uh, selected algebra. Uh, it's uh, somewhat applied algebra. Uh, you know, we try to figure out some problem in the, you know, communication systems. So we make some, uh, you know, codes using finite uh, uh, fields or you can say that uh, finite dimensional vector space over finite fields. We use that and try to, you know, each vector is some code word and uh, we can uh, you know we can use them in the communication system as well so that was amazing for me to find out in the beginning that that abstract algebra has such practical examples abstract and linear together so uh, we are using that to develop some you know code in which we can you know send a message from one place to another place and uh, then uh, uh, that message is actually coded using uh, the you know vectors in a finite vector space so uh, that is what my research area is. We are trying to develop some codes. And uh, uh, so it is actually algebra. You can take this subject after the algebra. So I am doing in that. I think that answered your question. Yes. I am really helpful by and I am from Badwan and I am pursuing my PhD degree from Badwan as well. BSc. Yes. Yeah. In, I am in third year. Third year. You are in third and year. I am beginning for change. Great, great. Keep it up. Yeah. Thank you, Vinod. Yeah. Thank you, Ritam. All, uh, all the very best for your excellence. Yeah. Yes, Harika. I hope I am visible. Hi sir, my name is Harika. Uh, I'm from Unity Calicut. I'm okay. a first year MSc student. Okay. Uh, we just started our classes and I'm starting my CSR preparation. You yeah. could say I'm at the very beginning level and the class was nice. I'm really, I kind of really like topology so we haven't started topology yet. I have attended topology classes from uh, some of my summer classes like two days and you okay. can push you like that. Uh, uh -huh. It was a bit high, so I like topology in somehow. Uh -huh. But uh, when you know, sir told to take a class in topology, and it was worth it. The class was very nice. Uh, I really like the classes, and it's kind of a good kick start uh, yeah. for this open student day. And I think uh, I was about to ask which uh, book should I refer for the starting level. We are actually referring to reading, uh, and I feel kind of it's kind of they are skipping most of the steps in the middle. Uh, so, yeah. Exactly how to connect those steps. Uh, I don't know how to say. So yeah. I think I should start with Mapa now. And yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you so much, Vinod, sir, as usual. He's always our savior. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All the best for your career. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, you can, you can actually. Uh, uh, you know, if you are at, uh, you know, starting with Rudin, then the purpose of starting with Rudin is suffer, okay. So, you need to suffer that uh, period. It's, uh, you know, that is the part of learning. You need to, you know, bang your head in front of wall and try to understand one line of that again and again. So, that is part, but again, if you are finding it very, you know, difficult and not able to understand something, then you can go back and refer to some basic books and come back here. Okay, so I think uh, doing uh, routine will be really good for you if if you are able to manage that. Yeah, very particular for the preciseness and compactness. Exactly. Yeah. It's really, little bit uh, difficult for the first time learners, but uh, yeah. if you can follow that, it will be a very nice experience and will be a very uh, great. Uh, it will be having a good advantage in your future studies. As well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but if you are uh, if you are focusing on particular exam like net JRF, then don't don't stuck behind a book. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, 
yeah so like once you qualify the exam you have qualified the jrf exam then uh, you can go for this book for your interview preparation and your knowledge level testing you know because yeah. then you will be get you know you will be paid for studying those book for every month so <laughs> the step one is to get stipend from someone to read those books and then read those books and get payment for that this book is also uh, nicknamed as baby rudin and yeah. then there is a real and complex yeah. analysis yeah. by rudin that's papa rudin and uh, then there is a functional analysis by rudin that's grandpa rudin so you have rudin's book for all of your age <laughs> okay so <laughs> it's always there yeah. yeah yeah you are let's see uh, hi rudin thanks lakshmi currently in my final year of yes on samaj raj college delhi we also actually started with our fifth semester. We have a paper on ethics paper. So, ma'am, please mention topology in the class. If you will go further, you study topology. So, it was really nice uh, getting yeah. that opportunity now because we are writing ourselves with the topic. Uh, thank you so much for taking out the time. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lakshmi. Yeah. I think all right then. Okay. So I am Anandita, and I am going to tell you now very quietly about the exam. And you told that the uh, questions majorly from CSI are net based questions, but uh, your explanation made the questions and answers simple, sir. We did a great session, sir, and allowed the questions very much. And we are very eagerly waiting for great such selected questions. Thank you very, very much, sir. And thank you, Vinay, sir, also. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, and okay. you're welcome. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, I'm in uh, IIT uh, Mumbai, pursuing my MSc first year. Okay. Uh, and I thankfully have been. Uh, across this math excellent group and uh, attended to, to today's session. So actually, I like the viewpoint. Uh, whenever we saw the questions, we uh, the uh, way we used to think actually changed like a bit, but it changed. Yeah. So I will be appearing in JAM exam uh, the next year. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a really helpful session for me. Thank you. Yeah, OK. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Your, your voice is very low, Aparna. I think it's not even audible. Can you do something? Can you mute yourself and unmute or something? No, it's not still not audible. Yeah. If you have earphone or something, Aparna, then try removing it. Yeah, I think same. Okay, okay, uh, dear participants, we are almost out of the time. Any of you would like to share any feedback, you can do that. Otherwise, yes, sir, I want to add something. So please don't forget to share the share your notes. Uh, today's class uh, a printout I can share. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can find uh, some more, uh, you know, so, uh, solved problems and some more content uh, which uh, actually I'm publishing on a website. 
which is called R squared mathematics. So I'm publish, I'm trying to solve, you know, some problems from the mathematical background from here and there and publishing their solutions regularly and they all are, of course, of no cost. We can share the address of your website. With the recording of this yeah sure yeah Lakshmi. Uh, thank you sir thank you sir for this wonderful class i am Lakshmi. i am from pnc college Pirur, kerala okay. uh, today's class was really nice and interesting you explained each and every question clearly mm -hmm. and thank you sir for spending your valuable time with us and thank you vinod sir for conducting this class thank you yeah you're welcome uh, my name is Devananda. I am in my third year of PSE. I am currently going to do my JAM exams. So uh, uh, I actually tried to do the questions with you, but uh, I uh, always got at least one option wrong, and the final question was the only one I got uh, completely right. Yeah. So uh, MSQ questions are always very tough uh, because you have to always check each and every option. So, uh, you explained it very well. Uh, I could understand it uh, to an extended level. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Devananda. Remember that uh, the only way to learn things is the practice. Practice, practice, and practice. That will make your answers the right ones. <laughs> Don't worry. Keep on practicing with more and more problems. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Some some network issues again. I think. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's uh, around <laughs> almost the data is being missed. Yeah, I think one GB is gone. <laughs> So I think uh, we can uh, end it here. Yeah. So once again, Rajendra, I'm very, uh, I'm very much thankful to you for this nice session, nice and right hand session. Yeah. And uh, you have explained the things in a very nice manner. So that how to, uh, so certainly our members have got some idea to explore the MCQ type questions. So I'm sure that uh, in the future we can arrange some sessions that will address questions from multiple select type as well numerical answer type for chat. So yeah. Yeah, we can. With your availability of time, we can think about arranging some sessions in that direction. Yeah, specifically, I was thinking about uh, 2021's JAM exam. That is like amazing pure mathematics is there. So yeah. We'll do in some near future. I would suggest yes. all of you to try to solve that question paper. That is really yes. good. Yeah. Examination conducted by IAS. Yes, exactly. That was a pure mathematics was amazing, you know, in that paper. It, it's beating net GRF and gate even. Once again, and thank you everyone. Okay, let us end it here. Good night. Yeah, all right. Thank you, sir. Good night, everyone, and such a good audience. Bye, everyone. And yeah, you're welcome, all of you.